What is up guys? Welcome back to yet another brand new Mage Ben gaming video. I hope you guys are having an awesome day as always. And I want to get straight into the video today, which is talking about, well, everything really from PlayStation and Xbox and the way that the gaming landscape is changing drastically at the moment. And we're going to see this even more today, tonight with the Xbox event and over the coming years. Uh, things are changing both at Sony and Microsoft and this is uh, something that's changing drastically and I want to give my opinions on it because I think I have some decent opinions here and something that you guys might be connecting with because I feel there's a lot of hate towards the console gamers at the moment and everyone seems to just think that it's going towards PC gaming but I really don't think that's the case because PC gaming is great as you can see I have my 4090 here but I actually play more on PlayStation and Xbox box that I do on my PC it's just that I require a powerful PC for other things in various other aspects of my personal life and my job. But um, at least for now, I want to talk about why the gaming is not just going to go straight to PC because there's very simple reasons for that. But we'll get into that later. But I want to talk very briefly about the first two articles, which is Sony actually, uh, Hiroki Totoki, talking about the company being more aggressive when it's coming to its uh, gaming division and profit margins, which he has talked about at their recent um, financial results, results, sorry, where they actually talked about a load of stuff. So uh, in terms of hardware, he noted that cost reduction in this console cycle is really difficult to come by compared to previous generations due to the increase in price of components and implied that console prices wouldn't be dropping while it looked for ways to improve margins. How, we, how can we, given the situation, put our product lines together to make it affordable without relying on steep discounts to reasonably sell them to continue our commercial journey on a sustainable basis, he asked. I personally think that's important and there is an opportunity in that. So this is Hiroki Totoki talking, um, Sony's uh, finance guy essentially. Totoki then addressed the topic of first party games and made it clear that he feels releasing the multi-platform, which he seemingly clarified as meaning PC, continues to be the way forward. Now this is great news for PlayStation. Anybody who takes that a different way is, is just silly. It's not a problem that more people get to play games. Bringing games to PC gives more money to Sony, enabling them to actually fund these massive games that we all love playing. This is why they are doing this. They've realized that the consoles aren't enough on their own to do this. In the past, we wanted to popularize console and first party titles. Main purpose was to make the console popular, he explained. This is true, but there's a synergy to it. So if you have strong first party content, not only on our console, but also other platforms like computers, a first party game can be grown with multi-platform and that can help operating profit to improve. So that's another one we want to work proactively on. I personally think there are opportunities out there for improvement of margin. So I would like to go aggressive on improving our margin performance. So that's very important. So you may think, well, Ben, you've just said something completely different to what you said a minute ago about how they're, they consoles aren't going to die. Well, no, consoles aren't going to die because even though they're bringing a lot of games to PC, their main player base is still PlayStation. Do you think they're just going to drop the millions of people that are buying their games on that platform, also buying their console, which yes, margins aren't as good as they were in previous console generations, but the point is we're still buying tons of games. PlayStation players are buying tons of games on those platforms and they sell ridiculously well. So they aren't just able to just drop that. And I think that's the same for Xbox. With all this talk about Game Pass not being profitable enough and all this, at the same time, they aren't just going to drop the console. Even though these both companies are pushing PC heavily, which they haven't done in the past, they are now because they need more players to adopt these games to fund them, not just console players, which means they are pushing the advertising a little bit towards the PC market because they haven't been in this market for long and they want to push things, make sure they're releasing day and date games on PC as well um, so that they get a wider audience, not just the console players. It doesn't mean they're going to abandon PlayStation, that there's not going to be a PlayStation 6. There absolutely is. In fact, talking about PlayStation 6, another thing that was brought up here was that PS5, he said, is the latter stages of its life cycle, Sony says. So I thought this is really interesting because if we're in the latter stages of the PlayStation 5 life cycle, are we really going to be getting a PS5 Pro or is this going to be it and all these leaks and rumors perhaps for the ps5 pro are potentially going to be what is playstation 6 and sony maybe are going to start doing a more iterative upgrade and maybe faster upgrades like smartphones not every year but perhaps every few years they're going to be doing this whole new console cycle thing 
I don't know, but what they did say uh, is looking ahead, PS5 will enter the latter stages of its life cycle. Matsuoka is quoted as saying, as such, we will put more emphasis on the balance between profit profitability and sales. For this reason, we expect the annual sales pace of PS5 hardware will start falling from the next fiscal year. So they actually didn't quite hit their sales in terms of PlayStation consoles as much as they had hoped, as you can see here. Sony had an ambitious, ambitious target of 25 million PS5 sold during the current financial year ending March 31st, 2025, but has now revised its forecast down to 21 million after PS5 sales during the crucial holiday 2023 quarter came in lower than expected despite aggressive promotions. Sony sold 8.2 million PS5s during the third quarter ending uh, December 31st, 2023, up from 7.1 million sold in the same quarter the previous year. So, I mean, it's not like it's not selling. It's selling extremely well. Perhaps Sony wanted it to sell a little bit better than it is, but it is selling extremely well. There are millions of console players out there. And as I said, PC gaming is great, but it is not the only option that there's going to be going forward because it can't be like that. I have plenty of friends who every year or every time a new console comes out, they'll buy a PS5 and they'll buy FIFA and they'll buy Call of Duty. Those players who want that option to just play a couple of titles with their buddies on the evening after work or the weekend or whatever, they are not going to go out and spend essentially a PS5 equivalent PC is like a grand and a half, they're not going to go out and spend over a thousand on a PC to just play those games. Those people will not be doing that. There is always going to be a market for some sort of system that is far lower end, far more affordable and easy. That's the other thing. I have a PC. I plugged it into my LG CX that's right behind me. There are a ton of games that just do not perform very well as it should for a 4090. For example, I've been playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider or whatever the latest one is on PC recently and I've had so many problems with it. Put it in Steam Big Picture mode, game runs flawlessly. Take it out of Steam Big Picture if you forget to put it in that stupid mode, then it just doesn't perform and I get major frame dips. Uh, Jedi Survivor is a mess. Jedi Fallen Order, buggy as heck, still to this day, stutter issues constantly on the PC version. It's unplayable. Uh, various different games, Dead Space still has stutters in it. There, there are a ton of games that come out just unplayable and I'd rather play those games on console still and I still buy a lot of my physical media as per yesterday's video on console systems because I'm so much happier playing there. It doesn't take long to set up and it's it's just so much easier. So there is always a market for simplicity and things like that you know, going forward, there's going to be something. And even Xbox with the whole rumors of tonight and what's going with the Xbox brand, I guarantee there's going to be another Xbox. I don't see that changing. Um, they do have a ton of their Game Pass audience is Xbox members. They, as much as they're pushing for the PC market and wanting more subscribers from PC, they're not just going to abandon the millions that are subscribed on consoles. That just doesn't make sense. They're not just going to abandon that. So they may up, they are, may up your prices. They might do that, but they're not just going to abandon that platform platform entirely, even if they do bring games to PlayStation, I still think there's going to be an Xbox, another generation at least, but it's interesting. I think the landscape is changing drastically going forward. I think there is going to be more uh, games going cross-platform. I think we could see some PlayStation games come to Xbox, and I think we could see some Xbox games come to PlayStation. I think things are very, very different at the moment, but just enjoy gaming, man. Don't worry about it. Don't turn your hobby into something that's something to stress about. I'm just talking about things in a video because I, I find it extremely interesting and fascinating, hence why you're probably watching. Uh, it's, it's interesting to see the landscape shift and change and uh, I'm excited to see what happens. But thank you for watching and I'll see you in future videos. Bye bye for now.